Good evening and welcome to the Mass for the Solemnity of All Saints. We are happy you are here with us. As we listen to the readings today, we hear a prescription for saintly life. Let us strive to live lives that will witness to our faith. Our Mass intention is for our parish family. The monthly collection for the Osage County needs will be taken up this weekend. This November collection will go toward adopting families for Christmas. Thank you for your generosity.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of God, the love of Christ, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. As we gather on this day when we remember all the faithful departed, let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have faith, have mercy on us and bring us to eternal life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, did we say the, the glory? No, we did not. Sorry. <laughs> glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, by whose gift we venerate in one celebration the merits of all the saints, be still on us, we pray, through the prayers of so many intercessors and abundance of the reconciliation with you for which we earnestly long. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, saw another angel come up from the east, holding the seal of the living God. He cried out in a loud voice to the four angels who were given power to damage the land and the sea. Do not damage the land or the sea or the trees until we put the seal on the foreheads of the servants of our God. I heard the number of those who had been marked with the seal 144,000 marked from every tribe of the Israelites. After this, I had a vision of a great multitude which no one could count, from every nation, race, people, and tongue. They stood before the throne and before the Lamb, wearing white robes and holding palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, Salvation comes from our God, who was seated on the throne, and from the Lamb. All the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They prostrated themselves before the throne, worshipped God, and exclaimed, Amen, blessing and glory, wisdom and thanksgiving, honor, power, and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders spoke up and said to me, Who are these wearing white robes, and where did they come from? I said to him, My Lord, you are the one who knows. He said to me, These are the ones who have survived the time of great distress. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. The lords are the earth and its fullness, the world and those who dwell in it. For he founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. 
Who can ascend the mountain of the Lord? Or who may stand in his holy place? One whose hands are sinless, whose heart is clean, who desires not what is vain. He shall receive a blessing from the Lord, a reward from God his Savior. Such is the race that seeks for him, that seeks the face of the God of Jacob. The second reading is a reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, see what love the Father has bestowed on us, that we may be called the children of God? Yet so we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. We do know that when it is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Everyone who has this hope based on him makes himself pure as he is pure. The word of the Lord. Thanks. May the Lord be on your heart and on your lips so that you may proclaim his gospel worthy and well. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you, you falsely against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. This is, interestingly enough, this is one of my favorite times of the year, this particular celebration of all saints today and all the holy souls on Monday. We remember all those who have gone before us marked with a sign of faith. But as Catholics, we're a little confused about the idea of sainthood because we have named saints, those who have been through the canonization process or have been handed down over the centuries as saints. And so we wonder, well, where does that leave us? Where that leaves us is exactly where we need to be We are saints by virtue of our baptism. We are all saints, and we are called to be saints. So it's an ongoing process. Begins with baptism, when our sins are washed away, the stain of original sin is washed away, and we become children of God. We enter into the kingdom of God. But sainthood requires a great deal of us. It requires daily faithfulness lifelong faithfulness. And when we fail, it requires us to make reconciliation, to be forgiven of those sins that separate us from God. But if you look at the lives of the saints, in fact, I was looking for some online. I wish I had kept one years ago. It was a very down-to-earth look at some of the more modern saints and some of the older ones and all their frailties and all their mistakes. Remember, St. Peter, St. Peter, denied Jesus three times. He was 
quick to say something and put his foot in his mouth. Paul was arrogant and uh, uh, hard-headed. Uh, St. Jerome was known for having a violent temper. Others suffered great spiritual uh, depression, you might call it, sadness, a, a, a feeling that God was no longer there with him, as in the life of St. Mother Teresa. All of these things, and yet they are saints. So I started to think about, well, who would I want to name as somebody that we could relate to? You know, we love our saints, but they're a bit removed from us. There's even one young man who is being moved toward canonization in Rome because of his devotion to bringing technology to the people in a way that builds up their faith. Well, what about the rest of us? Well, I think in our area, St. Isidore the farmer and his wife Maria, Mrs. Isidore, I think that they are a fine example, not just of a rural farm family, we've got those here, but of all hardworking people who simply lived their lives and raised their children in the faith and did what was right day in and day out. Now, there are stories about St. Isidore, of course, taking having help from the angels in his farming, perhaps. We do know that they were well known, he and his wife were well known for stopping when they heard the church bells in town to pray. And yet they prospered. I don't know that they were ever wealthy, but they were prosperous. They had all that they needed. And they lived their lives very simply. Whatever our vocation in life, let's live it to the fullest. That's how we become saints. We started out with baptism. The rest is going to take hard work and suffering. It may even require martyrdom on the, on the part of some of our brothers and sisters. It may require us to give of ourselves every day, to let go of a little more, to be a little bit more like Christ every day. It's the message I give to the kids every week just about. Keep thinking that way. Learn that. Put it in your head that I need to be more like Jesus every day. I think the gospel I would have preferred for today is the one where we just had, where the rich young ruler says, well, what do I need to attain eternal life? What do I need to be a saint? Is essentially what he's asking. And the Lord says, love God above all else and love your neighbor as yourself. These are the greatest commandments. Do the right thing. Live as you know you should live. Listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. That's how we become saints. We don't become saints, unfortunately, by taking the easy road. We don't become saints by having a, a river of just great, wonderful things all the time. God does bless us, and he brings, but he brings us through those difficult times. Those are the times when we're getting a little bit closer to being a saint. Nobody wants trouble, nobody wants difficulty. It's part and parcel of human life because of sin, but it's also a part of our spiritual growth that we suffer, that we struggle. Why doesn't God make it all easy? Because when we get to heaven, that's when we sit back and relax, and all those labors are done. But as it is now, we are part of what is referred to as the church militant. The church triumphant in heaven are those we remember today, those who have already conquered sin and death, those who are praying and interceding for us. We are the church militant. The ones that got to keep out there, stay out there, and do the work that needs to be done. And just one more encouraging thought. The writer to the Hebrews says that we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. If you've ever been to a sporting event, especially a race, though, everybody's cheering them on. Everybody's saying, come on, you can make it. That's what we remember today. The saints in heaven are saying, come on, you can do this. It's worth it. It is so worth it. Keep on keeping on. And if you struggle and if you fall, pick yourself up. Or better yet, help someone else who is struggling, who has fallen. And let's keep running the race, as St. Paul said, the race for the prize that is eternal. Not for something that passes away, not for a t-shirt, not for a crown of uh, leaves, but for an eternal reward of spending our eternity with Christ our Savior as saints. As we continue this journey, may God grace us with everything that we need, including faith, courage, and strength as we go forward to, meet, to continue to live 
as saints. Let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. And under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. And then into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, and I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, life for the world to come. Amen. With faith, hope, and love, we ask the intercessions of all the Holy Ones. <clears throat> that our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and our Bishop, Sean McKnight, may lead the faithful on the road to holiness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the church on earth may join with the saints in heaven in joyful praise to God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick and suffering may be united to the suffering of Christ in humble surrender and find comfort in the models of the lives of the saints. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the saints in heaven, the church triumphant, may intercede for the church militant here on earth. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the people of God may grow in holiness of life and faithfulness to the holy Catholic faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions of today's Mass, that the intercessions of all the saints be added to our prayers. For John Bacchus and Marvin Buthode, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And this first week of November is also the week that we pray for vocations. O God, who wish all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of your truth, send, we beg you, laborers into your harvest, and grant them grace to speak your word with all boldness, so that your word may spread and be glorified, and all nations may know you, the only God, and him whom you have sent, Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, world without end. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth, the work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine, the work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Amen. 
May these offerings we bring in honor of all the saints be pleasing to you, O Lord, and grant that just as we believe the saints to be... Uh, just as we believe the saints to be already assured of immortality, so we may experience their concern for our salvation through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For today, by your gift, we celebrate the festival of your city, the heavenly Jerusalem, our mother, where the great array of our brothers and sisters already gives you eternal praise. Towards her, we eagerly hasten as pilgrims advancing by faith, rejoicing in the glory bestowed upon those exalted members of the church through whom you give us in our frailty both strength and good example. And so we glorify you with the multitude of saints and angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. <clears throat> to you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you first for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, Sean, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. (coughs) In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, we, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept 
the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, and bless them and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
As we adore you, O God, who alone are holy and wonderful in all your saints, we implore your grace so that coming to perfect holiness in the fullness of your love, we may pass from this pilgrim table to the banquet of our heavenly homeland. Through Christ our Lord. A couple of things to mention. Uh, there's sign-up sheets, I believe, in the back of the church for Christmas Masses. We'll be there before we know it. And some other th- uh, days that are coming up, the Holy Days of Obligation, different things. And that information should be in the bulletin as well. Also, uh, tomorrow morning after the 10 a.m. Mass, we will go over to the new cemetery for the blessing of the cemetery. The old cemetery, we'd like to have the students join us. So that'll be Wednesday morning after the uh, school Mass, about 8.30. And yes, this week is a a national day of week of prayer for vocations. We really need more men and uh, the priesthood in our diocese. So please... Offer that up as your prayers for this week. You pray the rosary, whatever prayers you pray, and we'll be grateful for that. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord with your lives.